Uh, very good afternoon to you all um, and welcome. Goedemiddag aan jullie allemaal en baie welkom vandag by my uh, uitsending. I'm glad the aircon is working uh, here in the boardroom. The last one or two times I had problems with the aircon, it was quite warm. So I'm glad it's uh, serviceable today. I try to get a mic um, to boost my voice uh, recording, but it doesn't seem to work. But uh, I'm working on that because I picked up in the last uh, comments uh, that some of you could not hear my voice. I must say, these videos uh, take some effort to put together. You know, one just doesn't put up a screen and start talking. There's a bit of research to be done. You've got to follow the news. And when you're driving about between appointments, things come to mind. You make a note on your piece of paper and then you carry it over to your preparation work. So there's about quite a couple of hours that goes into this, this uh, YouTube um, social uh, media presentation. But anyway, let's go. Please remember also to, uh, to press the like button, share, subscribe, and also press that notification button for our latest videos. Today I'm going to talk to you about the end result, um, which is quite uh, self-explanatory. Uh, and at the end of the day, it comes back to you making that decision. We know and we've discussed many times, we have different opinions. And uh, you'll see... Uh, as I go through what we're trying to do. Now, why do we focus on repetition uh, and the realities in South Africa on our videos? Because it's important. It's important to keep pushing out the truth uh, as, as it is recorded uh, of what's going on in the country. You know, just like companies, companies have... Uh, various processes in place, they have SOPs, they have policies, and there's always retraining, retraining, there's weekly training, there's monthly training, there's quarterly training. And all these things need to be done because the processes and the realities of running a company need to be stamped in uh, into the working environment. Similarly with these videos that go out, we may seem repetitive, but uh, the realities and the truth has to get out there. And at some stage, other it will then surface. So I'm going to inform you what's, what's going on, as I always have. Otherwise, I would not be carrying out my authority that's been bestowed upon me. Now, during presentations, uh, one usually starts with a with a bigger picture, and then you zoom in to the finer details. Uh, today, I'm going to do it the other way around. I want to start off uh, individually with my personal experience with the presidency. And then I'm going to take it to the bigger picture. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to discuss my involvement with the state presidency, the embassies and the businesses, and as I've experienced their attitudes, uh, which then would measure up to the end result. I'm then going to talk about uh, get-togethers with friends and family and how this thing measures out uh, to an end result. And then I'm going to talk to you briefly on the stealing that's going on, the crime and the corruption, which is actually stealing, and by design and implementation, and of course, uh, how this uh, end result then surfaces. I'm also going to talk to you quickly about Human Rights Day, which is coming up on Monday, the 21st of March, and also the, the end result. And of course, as always, I'm going to come to closure, and then lastly, I'm going to talk about decision time. Right, before I start, uh, I just want to taste some water. Water always helps. Uh, gets that tongue loose. Right. My engagement with the uh, state presidency started uh, in November of 2019 uh, for a period of six to nine months. Uh, where I wrote several letters. I wrote to Cyril Ramaphosa personally, the president. Uh, I engaged with his spokesperson. I engaged with his secretary. And I engaged with two directors. 
and I also personally drove there uh, and I was uh, met with the South African Police Services at the entrance. I have also engaged myself with embassies in Pretoria uh, and their governments overseas and as I've mentioned before, I think in my first or second video, only the Irish government, the TD there, responded uh, on my letters, several letters I wrote about the condition of a country, the racial division, the crime, uh, and putting a solution together, a package solution, to bring about a positive change for South Africans. I also, in person, spoke to General Shorke and General Satoli of the police services. General Shorke was of the defense. And I also, I also tried to get them to get me to the president. They were hesitant, and they always were saying that they have everything under control. Now remember, this is 18, 12 to 18 months before the July riots of 2021. I've also engaged myself via email to the personal assistance of various church leaders, uh, businessmen with national and international influence. I'll mention the names. Jan Rupert, Nikki Oppenheimer, and Patrice Musepe. And also local businessmen I engaged with. Now I'm talking about November 2019. Um, that's a few years back. I also copied many news outlets, media outlets, te and television stations. And even the E! News invited me uh, to a talk, but I said uh, it's not possible at the moment because I'm getting no cooperation at all from nobody. Uh, over the period of the six to nine months. And if I look at this end result, I say to myself, why are these leaders, state and business leaders, not interested to engage with one another, to share their skill and experience, to bring about a remedy for this country? Now remember, South Africa can cater for a social type structure and can also cater for a capitalist, um, entrepreneurial type business structure. It's all possible, but the will and attitude has to be there, and that's not there. I say to myself, why was there no response to my emails well, by the Irish government over the period of uh, six to nine months? This is all on record. It's all on email. It's, it's lying on their email boxes. And, you know, again, why, 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 why? Is there an absence of character here? Is there an element of fear and rejection? Is it about keeping my post or my work or my, my contracts and keep my income secure? What is the reason why these state and business leaders don't engage and come together? Why is nobody involved in fixing South Africa before these July riots broke out? And of course, I, I wrote here is, why is money more important than people? Why is it like that? Why is the money more than catering and caring for people? You never chase money. You look after your people and the money will follow you. That's the principle. Of course, the attitude of unification is absent and the selfish me seems and appears to be more important than anything else. And then I wrote here uh, in, at, the, at the end of this is, maybe it's because when a country does well, now this is now on international trade, they call it the long uh, and the bull, the bull run. The international trade makes money. And when a country goes down, like with Zimbabwe, the international trade also makes money. And they call this on the short or the bear. So whether a country does well or does not do well, there's international powers that make big money on the up or the down of a country or its economy. So that then is my involvement between the periods of November 2019 until July plus September of 2020. No response from nobody. Okay, then let's talk about gatherings. You know, when we get together uh, 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 at Bryce with family and friends, I mean, there's nothing nicer than that, having a nice beer and, a, and some meat and some pop tart. Well, what, what goes on at these gatherings? We either talk about sport or we talk about politics. But what's interesting uh, when we get together is that nobody agrees. Nobody agrees to what's going on in the country. You know, you hear this, you hear that. 
uh, I say my say, and then uh, friends and family say yes, but you know, the ANC, Cyril, he knows what's going on, and he's busy pulling this country together. Uh, and he's, he's sorted out the RT forces. Look, the RT forces, according to them, were not successful in July of 2021. Whereas I say they were, because, I mean, look at the end result. I mean, shops were plundered. The defense force and the police force did nothing. The intelligence services did nothing. And then, of course, you'll hear, yes, but, you know, Herman Mashaba now of the of the action is say he's now left the DA and he's going to pull the country right. And he's there, and he's there uh, for the bigger plan. But I mean, just last week, Herman said that uh, he doesn't like the DA. Well, when he says that, then, of course, he doesn't like all the DA supporters. So you see, again, there's no unity. There's a lack of leadership all over. Uh, so I don't see any progress. Um, and of course, you know, uh, these family gatherings sometimes get a bit distasteful. There's a lot of negative, uh, negative, negative undercurrent. And uh, let's look at the end result of these gatherings. So friends and family, they differ about the situation in the country. Now, why? Why is it uh, that I, among lots, see the deterioration? We see uh, chaos. We see anarchy. We're already in anarchy, as I've mentioned before, not probably the, the last step of anarchy. But other people think it's fine. Everybody, everybody says it's, it's going well. They don't see the realities. Uh, and of course, then... Uh, one is then reluctant to continue with, with get-togethers. And you say, well, maybe it should be myself or associate yourself with people that can see what's going on uh, and are involved and want to fix and or align to prevent a scenario like, that we see taking place presently in Ukraine. So that's that's the gatherings. Now let's have a look quickly at, at crime and corruption, as we all well know, which is a, it's a form of stealing. Uh, and I wrote here is... Uh, it is by legal design and implementation. So let's look at this. This expropriation uh, of land without compensation, EWC. Now, is this a form of stealing? I say yes. It's, a, it's by legal design and impl implementation to take from others legally. Uh, so it is a form of stealing. These transformation laws uh, that are coming through for businesses and various industrial sectors, also it's a form of stealing. Transformation is another, another word for, for stealing. And it's by legal design and implementation to ensure that business is captured, that white monopoly capital is eliminated. Let's look at our equity plans that must be submitted yearly uh, from businesses. It's the same there. Uh, it's, it's, it's something that's been put in place by law if you don't comply, you'll get a hefty fine. It's by design, it's by legal design to take, to steal. And this is my window on it. And uh, I am open for um, to be proved wrong or otherwise. Also that's come to mind is this COVID money that the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, uh, it was 65 billion that was donated in July of 2020. Where is the audits on this? Uh, by the State Auditor General uh, here in, in Pretoria. Where's these audits on this on this money? Where has it gone to? But what's interesting is that there's no audit, but again, the World Bank, which is an affiliate of the IMF, donates a year later development money of seven of, of $750 million, 11.5 billion rand in January of this year. So the COVID money of 65 billion is missing, is not, not declared and is also not audited, but a year and a half later, we get another donation from the World Bank of 11.5 billion. So, where does all the money go to? Because nothing works, no service delivery, uh, there's no jobs, no job creation, total mess, as we've discussed many times. So let's look at the end result on this, on this one. Here, I've uh, wrote, the selected rich empower themselves through the legal implementation systems and laws that are passed to gain wealth without any form of recourse. The poor remain poor and the dependent, and they remain dependent on the state. So basically, in a nutshell, at the end of the day, the people that can make money and, and, and generate businesses and create employment, you will own nothing. Nothing at all in your personal capacity 
and also in business. Now, here's the interesting one that's coming up now on Monday, is the Human Rights Day. Now, if we look at the Human Rights Day that we are celebrating, it takes place on the 21st of March every year to commemorate the darkest days of the histories of South Africa. So let's look at this. Now, the, these, these uh, uh, dark days I'm going to mention to you, and then again it's for you to decide is, we look at Sharpal Massacre of March 1960, uh, where 69 South African citizens were killed. I'm saying, what about Americana Massacre in August of 2012, where 34 workers were killed, mine workers were killed? Let's go back a bit more. Let's go back to the massacre at Wien in February of 1838, where 500 and 34, 534 white and black citizens were murdered by the Zulus. Now, let's look at recently, let's look at last year of July of 2021 riots. There were well over 300 South African citizens killed. And today we still see the political elite that were behind this walk free, drive most expensive cars, while their supporters still have no work and no food. But they still take to pl uh, public platforms, promote division, and have nothing else uh, or nothing, have created no future in creating jobs for their supporters and for the rest of the South Africans. Oh, what interesting issue here is that I, I need to mention to you is that Minister Becky Selly, he runs the South African Police Services, but Satoli, okay, he's a Zuma man, he gets fired and dismissed. Can you see the good guy, bad guy strategy that's been played out here? So let's look at the end result of this uh, Human Rights Day. Only South African black massacres by South African white policemen back in that day, 1960s, are recognized and remembered for further racial division. Just the Sharpville one. But let's look at Marikana massacre by the South African black employed policemen. This is not recognized and remembered. It stays quiet. Why is this? Interesting. Let's look at the Wien massacres by South African blacks, in other words, Zulus, on South African whites and blacks. This is also not recognized and remembered. This event remains silent. Why is this? And of late, and I mean to mention this to you, uh, this is how it's been seen, is the July massacre riots of 2021, where the 300 South Africans were killed by the political elite appointments. And party ministers and the intelligence and defense and police are all, this is not recognized and will not be recognized or remembered. This event will be, remain silent and uh, we need to ask the questions, why is this? In summary then, you have to look at the end result. The end result gives you the truth. Is the ANC, let's call it the Cyril Ramaphosa party, are they doing the right thing? Are they pulling the country together? Look at the end result. I say no. Did the RT forces get anything right during July of 2021? Yes, they did. But they also put the country at its worst. So the ANC split. Neither are pulling this country together. None of them. And I won't even go to mention what the EFF and the BLF and others will do. This is what I'd like you to do. Apart from uh, subscribing and sharing, I want you to tell 10 people about what's going on in the country. Tell them the truth. Tell them about these videos. And those 10 people must tell another 10 people. That's what you have to tell. Or share. Just 10 people. And those 10 people tell another 10 people. And those 10 people will then tell another 10 people. And then the whole nation is covered. Then you'll get the message because the YouTube is limited. Not everybody has access to, to YouTube or have a budget for the YouTube. So if you just do it, as I've shared with you now, 10 people tell, tell 10 people and those 10 people tell another 10 people, then there's enough coverage. And if you have a conscious, conscious, you must do something. You must help one another. I'm asking you to show character to your fellow South African citizens. If we just look at Ukraine, they had eight years eight years to put a plan of sorts together. How many of them are suffering? All because their leaders did not, over the period of eight years, put some form of plan together. As we sit here today, over the past two, three weeks, genocide has taken place in uh, Ukraine. War is genocide. 
and Russia is busy with genocide to acquire a better economy and to extend their land boundaries, which I've mentioned, I do not think will just stay with Ukraine. I think Romania and Finland, Poland and all those places close are on the doorstep. So this comes up to my last point for today. Decision time. I'm calling on you to acknowledge and to unite and to join the Saitlanders and the Saitland for the Erechen, Southland Defense uh, um, Affiliates Initiatives. I want you to join and to be part of the A team. Life still continues, as I said before, but you need a plan. Let's become one again. I'm asking you all, let's become one again. Seriously consider joining. Below are the links that you can go through. It'll take you to the processes to, to join uh, our organization. And remember, uh, Saitland and Saitland Pudirachen, it's a national emergency plan initiative that kicks in when the government cannot look after you or protect you any further. You saw it happen in July of 2021. It can happen again. I've mentioned this two or three times. So please join so you can be part of the A-team. We're looking forward to seeing you and having you on board. And of course, if you can afford a burger or you have a pension or a life policy or retired, retirement and unity of sorts, you can surely invest a plan that can secure you in case of anarchy. Just do it. Like Richard Branson always says, just do it. That's the logo. Um, so finally then, again, share, subscribe on all platforms and press that notification button for our future videos. I'm looking forward to seeing you all again soon. Uh, stay well, safe, keep sharp as always. Tot ziens en groeten.